Okay, here's a quick rundown on uh, some settings for Cam Studio. I'm, as you can see, I'm using the original uh, point for a 2.0 version over here. Um, for options, video options, I always set to XVID, and then I hit configure. I make sure this, which by default usually is at four, switch that to one, and I go up here to more. And I generally turn this, which by default is H.263, I change it to MPEG, and I uncheck this box here. That's if I'm going to be having any kind of motion at all. Okay. Then I go down here, and this is normally a general purpose. I change it to real time. Then I click other options, and I make sure that this is unchecked, display encoding status. It is just my routine things that I do for every recording. And once you set it, it remembers what your settings are. Okay, so that's XVID all set up. Now I uh, am doing capture frames at 50 and 20. These two, when you multiply them, these two boxes, they should uh, come to a product of, t of 1,000. Okay, so here we have 50 times 20 is 1,000. Uh, you can check this box and it'll have lock capture and playback rates will keep the, the only values available will keep them multiplying to a thousand. If you really want to push it hard, go to 5200 or uh, 8125 or 10100 and uh, you'll have to adjust the playback rate in software. Um, sometimes YouTube will accept this just the way it is, but usually if you're going to use these fast playback rates You'll get smoother capture because you're pushing your card as fast as it can. You see the actual input rate here is 15 uh, frames per second. Even though in my view options, I've got it set to capture at 25, but it, uh, it only pushes it as hard as it feels like the, your machine's got resources or something. I have no idea. So even though I'm asking it to capture every 40 and do a playback rate of 25, the actual input rate is only 15 here. If I had set that to a higher number, I would have gotten a higher frames per second. Okay, So that's why I tell you that you can set this to a higher value, where the playback rate is a higher number, and that will make the, uh, the system work harder. Okay, All right, so now once you have that in place, another now mind you, if you have a fast playback rate, you're also going to have shorter time lengths that you can record. So uh, what I had, uh, 40, 25. So. Um, for audio, it's the next big thing. Make it so it says record audio from microphone. Don't use record audio from speakers. You can try it, but it doesn't work on practically any computers nowadays. Record audio from microphone, then go in here to audio options. Audio options for microphone. And set your recording device. If you're trying to get game audio, you're going to have to use stereo mix to get the thing in. Or go get the voice meter. Okay. Or the VB audio from the same locations. I'll include the links in the uh, video. And uh, so, if you, so that's if you want game audio. The voice meter thing is nice because it lets you mix your microphone in with the game audio. And uh, so that's nice, and it gets around the listen to trick that I show in one of my other videos. And uh, it's doing pretty much the same thing in many ways, but it's easier to set up and, and it remembers how you had things set up. Okay. Um, for what I'm doing right now, I had it set just to my, my microphone, which is a blue eyeball. The same thing as a snowflake by blue microphones. Um, you set your rate. In here, uh, it defaults to going at a real low rate at 22. Uh, I would set it to 44 if, if you're doing a YouTube upload. That's what they want. They want 44.1 uh, stereo, 16 bit. Now, if you're going into a type of interface where you're winding up with your microphone only in the one channel, in the left channel, for instance, you can go ahead and set this to mono. It'll create a pseudo mono, a stereo thing with the same signal going into both. And then you'll see that reflected down here. Always <coughs> use the PCM compression format for this. These others don't work so great. 
<coughs> but AD PCM does work pretty well. <coughs> there we go. So, um, I usually take interleave off. The last thing to consider is the region. Use fixed region. Set it to the region you want. I recommend most people's computers are not cap powerful enough to do 1080p, but most are capable of doing 1280 by 720, which is 720p. And that looks great on all machines. And um, you can do have a fixed top left corner, like I did over in this this one. I fixed it to 520 by 355 in order to get so I could get down into see some of the tray as you can see I could have set this number higher um, the left I could have set maybe to 550 or 560 in order to push this right edge over a little more in case I had wanted to show like the speaker icon or something but uh, but that's that's how you use that if you're going to set this number using the select button Make sure this is unchecked before you push select, okay? The way select works is you have this unchecked, push select, you drag out your region. I'll drag out a region. Here we go. And it puts in the numbers. Then go in and adjust this so that it says 1280 by 720. And you see your area that you picked is up in here. And now you check that, and now it'll actually use the, the, the setting that you dragged out with the top and left, okay? So uh, let's try that again and see what it would have been if I had instead made my left be over there. Let's see. Uh, no, that wouldn't be it. Let's try it this way. Select again. I'm going to select from the a little off to the right. and try to approximate what a 1270 look should look like okay so it's saying my left would have been about 680 actually um, if I wanted the to include the tray bar and the clock anyway just remember to check that once you're done and then when you start a video it will uh, it'll automatically show the little flashing cursors now if you don't want to see the flashing cursor then uh, go into program options here and say hide flashing cursor you have to check that in order to make it go away all right um, do not I don't recommend minimizing that minimizes it to the taskbar down to the tray I mean down to the tray not to the taskbar the thing that's in your taskbar like you see this one right here you see it that's flashing in these later versions okay and I didn't minimize this for this one if I had minimized it you wouldn't see this up here because it would be in the task tray bar next to the clock. You would see the flashing, and a lot of people make the mistake of closing the flashing, clicking the X, and that breaks Camp Studio pretty bad. You have to go into the tray and right click and uh, and exit or stop from there. I usually double click double click it to make it come back up so it's visible again, and I push stop. All right, so. So you got region and the main options, program options. Uh, there's some pro flat record to flash options if you decide to use them. This little sun shape thing changes. See now it's record to flash or swift. Okay. Um, record to MP4. It's still broken at the moment. It'll work pretty soon. It's trying to. It makes an AVI and then tries to do a conversion to FFmpeg. But you may as well just do the conversion to FFmpeg manually using any program you have available and I would keep it record AVI at this point no matter what you're doing okay because there's better flash converters and there's better um, MPEG-4 converters at the moment but if you want the convenience uh, for the flash it's going to make it'll make a flash file for you if you're going to do the flash I recommend that you have it that you do not have this checked see where it says delete the intermediate AVI upon completion Get rid of that. Uncheck it. Don't have it checked because in case it crashes and doesn't make the SWIFT file, you want to have that AVI file so you can do a manual conversion. 
If it worked fine, sure, then go in and manually delete the file. But you don't have a backup if you have that checked. And future versions, that won't be checked by default. Okay? And you can display the conversion options before generating the SWIFT. And that's a good idea to do because it gives you some more control over what's going to happen next. Okay, so I hope that's enough to get you going. I'm not going to cover all these other things, um, the tools and effects in this video. I'm trying to keep it short because a lot of people complain my others are all too long. Okay, so that's all for today, and uh, make some videos. Thanks.